Hello and welcome back to the programming in C++ Part 2 series. Uh, in this video we're going to cover, continue to cover Chapter 10, which deals with classes and data abstraction. Uh, so uh, before we get started, go ahead and please smash that like button, leave a comment, and make sure you're subscribed to the channel. If you have not yet created a YouTube uh, login, uh, please take the time to go ahead and do so. It takes less than one minute and it is absolutely free. That once you do create your login, you'll be able to like, comment, and subscribe to channels. And when you subscribe to channels, you'll be notified when new material is posted. And it makes it easier for you to navigate throughout YouTube. So with our first exercise, we'll be going into programming in C++ Part 2, programming exercise 10-19. Here, the finance header file has been provided. So use the above formulas to determine the total amount cap accumulated into an ac account and the periodic deposit to accumulate a specific amount. Your class should have instance variables to store the periodic deposit, the value of M, the interest rate, and the number of years the money will be saved. Add appropriate constructors to initiate instance variables, functions to set the valuable, uh, values of the instance variables, functions to retrieve the values of the instance variables, and functions to do the necessary calculations and output the results. Also, write a program to test your class. Since your program handles currency, make sure you use the data type that can store decimals with a decimal precision of 2, so we'll set our precision, and we will use a double. Alright, and here the task. Task 1, the program is able to initialize finance objects. Task 2, uh, finances total accumulated member function works as expected. And then task three, finance periodic payment to accumulate a sum member functions work as expected. All right, so let's go do a quick look at our header file. <coughs> and we'll use this for reference. Move it up to the other screen. And let's look at our implementation. This is where we're going to do our work here. <coughs> so let's start with our include statements. First, we'll use IOStream. Then we'll need CMath for this one. our header file. It's going to be named finance.h. Alright. And then let's do using namespace std. So we call it. Alright. So let's go ahead and run a function here. Let's do void finance. colon and we'll call set. And here variables are going to be a double and call this one pd another double call it deposit in a year deposit it Do our brackets. And let's take a quick break. We'll be right back after this to finish the uh, implementation file. All right, let's move our brackets to the right end point. There we go. Let's indent and let's go. Let's go period, uh, periodic deposit, PD. And this will equal PD. Alright, next, we 
not num of deposits in here. And in year. Alright, let's do that. And then this is gonna be depending the year. Deposits in a year. Alright, so the this is going to define these, what we're doing with our variables. Alright, so next we'll have years. And this is going to equal y. And then interest rate. So let's go copy this right here because we're going to use this a few more times. So let's go to line 18 and we'll go void finance set and we'll set periodic deposit deposit and we'll use the devil PD. Alright, let's use our brackets and we'll go periodic deposit equals Set the number of deposits in a year. And this one's going to be double, and we we'll use dip in a year. And it didn't come up. Surprise. Brackets. Okay. And let's go uh, num of deposits in a year. In the year, this is going to equal dip in a year. Yep, so colon. So we got that straight. Let's go to our next one. And this time we're going to set the total number of years. And then here we just need the yeah, we'll do years. So we go double. Y. And then brackets and years equals y. And we'll do like a set interest rate. And then this would be double IR. Just the brackets. And we got interest rate equals IR. Get, we'll get a uh, periodic deposit. Let's see, these are going to be here. Yeah, we'll use this for now. And we'll use this double. And change the double. Change that to get. Periodic deposit set. And this is open. So 
brackets. And then we're going to return React Puzzle. Colon. Let's copy this now. Let's reuse this a few times. And let's go paste it there. And then double finance this next one's gonna be get number of deposits in a year. Double, uh, we're going to get total number of years. Total number of years. Then we're going to return years. Next, we're going to get the interest rate. And let's see what's left. We have total accumulated. Rate by number of deposits in a year. Then we will double in equals number of deposits in a year. S times I. Alright, so let's continue. And then we'll do finance, finance. And let's go up here and get the variables. Find that in the main. 
All right, so that's it for our implementation file. Let's go ahead and take a quick break and be right back after this. All right, welcome back. Let's go ahead and clear up this fault. I think I knew what I need to do to clear it up. So let's go copy this here. Finance total accumulated, and then we'll fix that in turn. So we'll change this to periodic payment to accumulate a sum. And now here we'll use our double called S. All right, so that goes away, but this doesn't need to be there interest rate, number of deposits in a year, and then N will equal number of deposits in a year times years. And this will need to be total commit, so let's return periodic deposit times POW. And then our n, just by that bracket, and then minus that by one point oh. Alright, and now we have to divide by the interest. There we have it. Alright, so next, to do, do that looks good. Just rate number deposit, and it goes on the deposit of years, and then return s times i divided by. Alright, so that looks good. Now we have cleared up that fault. And then our implementation file is complete. So let's move that out the way. And let's go ahead and do our main. Alright, so main. Gonna add our IO manip on the on the main for include statement. And let's see. Also we need to add our header file. That and put quotes, and it is finance.h. Alright, and it's our header file, everything else is good. Let's move this bracket for cosmetics, and let's go ahead and get some ready to work. Let's scroll down, you can see those header files I added. I'll open it, finance.h, and then let's go straight into our main, and let's do finance, and we're going to use their examples. So the first one is Lisa. It's going to be 500, comma, 6, comma, 20, comma, 0 0.048. Then let's use bill. Decision and we'll make it two. So next let's go to C out. Let's go total accumulated. And this is account. Fifty thousand. One, two, three. And 
Let's go ahead and copy this and we'll paste that. Actually, we're just going to type this up. Confusion is a little bit different. Let's go periodic. If we're searching something else for a bill. There'll be periodic payment needed to accumulate. $250,000 in Bill's account. So that's it for the main. We'll go to the top so you can see that. So we can do. And we don't use any commas and use any. So let's go ahead and go over our. Actually, let's go ahead and run it first. Make sure we got a good <clears throat> standing on that. All right, total accumulated in Lisa's account is. Let's go ahead and take a this one. Calculate while we're looking at the code, at the output. Great. So here we go. Total accumulated in Lisa's account, $100,108.73. Periodic payment needed to accumulate $250,000 in Bill's account is $4,804.84. Right, that looks good from a running standpoint. Let's see what we calculate on. And if that is good, we'll go ahead and check out the code. Let's move on up to our task. Calculate. All right, so here we go. We have three green check marks. Test one, test two, test three. Got 100%. So let's go through our code real quick, starting with when the header file was provided for us. Let's look at our implementation file. And here's the top. So I'm going to scroll. I'm going to go through and show it. Please pause it if you need lines one through 18. And I'm going kind of fast, so pause it. Be ready to pause as I get to the screen. All right, so there's one through 18. Here's line 19 through 35. Line 36 through 52. Line 53 through 70. And to the end of our code. All right, I'm gonna scroll down one more time. So with the same thing, make sure you pause it if you need to. Um, you need to remind it to you as well. All right, so let's scroll down. And that's it for our main. So hopefully that helps you. Let's scroll go over to our, for our implementation file. Let's go to our main now. And then here's our main line 1 through 18. 19 is empty, and that's the end of our code. All right, so I'm going to scroll one more time. Make sure you pause it if you need it. And there you have it. All right, so that's all for exercise 10-19 in programming in C++ Part 2. We'll see you on the next one. Uh, next exercise is going to be... Programming in C++ Part 2, Programming Exercise 10-20. All right. And here we're going to write a program to test the class stock type. The header and implementation file for the stock type class has been provided. 
your program should prompt the user with information to calculate the, per the percentage of gain or loss for the stock provided. An example of the program is shown below. Please enter the following information. Stock name, stock picker symbol, current price, the low price for the day, high price for the day, previous days, closing price, the 52 week high price, 52 week low price, Microsoft MSFT, $25.60, so 00.2450, 00, Microsoft MSFT, $25.60. And percent gain loss is 4.49%. 4 Since your program handles currency, make sure to use a data type that can store decimals with a decimal precision of 2. And task 1, program produces the correct output. Alright, so let's go ahead and look at our code from there. So we have... Let's take a break. We'll be right back after this. Okay, so let's look at our header file, and we'll move this to the next screen so we can reference it. Same thing with our implementation file, looks like they did all the work for us this time. Let's have a short journey on this one. Alright, so then let's move that to the next, the other screen, and I'll reference that as well. Let's go to our main. And the first thing we need to do is our include statements. So let's do that. First we'll have our IO manip. And string. And then let's add our header file name, which is quotes the stock type. So let's go ahead and do some concurrent cosmetics. Scroll that down. Here we just need to do, okay, let's do the stock type. And we'll do MSFT. And we'll go Microsoft. Simple. And then we'll add these 2560. It's been a long time since that's been 2560. All right, 0, 2450, and 0, 0, comma, and semicolon right there. Let's go our set, set our precision. Set precision. And we got two. And so we go on there. And we just gotta do MSFT dot print. And let's use our function semicolon. See out. Let's see. We'll do some asterisks. Let's do 15 asterisks here. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. Alright. Okay. And we'll just add line. See out. Let's go percent slash gain. Actually, percent gain slash loss. And let's go MSFT dot percent gain loss. else we've got. That's all we should need. Let's go to our companion and try to run that. This should be 
pretty simple one. And there's our output that we want it. Alright, so let's go ahead and calculate that. And what I was calculating, let's see, we're going to calculate. That was a real short one. As soon as it calculates, we'll go ahead and, whoops, we got a mistake. See if we did wrong, we're able to find Microsoft for MP. That's not true. Okay, let's look at our code again. That's block type, Microsoft, Microsoft, MSFT, 560, 00, 2450, 00. Fix, set precision, MSFT print. Good there. Don't know why this is not running. Let's check our include statements. Have an upstring. Stock pile. Let's add these in there just in case. This one might not calculate for us. So we have everything it's saying that we're missing. Twenty-five sixty zero zero twenty-four fifty zero zero. What did it do? Percentage gain loss. Did it? Yeah, it did. Percentage gain loss four point four nine. So we got the desired output. Let's run it again. Calculate it one more time. So there we go. Let's calculate that. Let's see. Make that two one hundred percent. Meanwhile, let's look at our code. This code is correct. We added our three include statements, including the, uh, the uh, header file name, and this is all that we needed to do from there. We'll go ahead and pause that if you need to. Let's go back and see if we got our 100%. Nope. So this one gives out zero, and we don't do anything else. So what I'll do is make sure I'll make a note of that. And it's 10-20. Okay, let's zero. So that's all for uh, exercise 10-20. Uh, we'll catch you on the next one. Thanks for watching. Take care and have a wonderful day. Please don't forget to like, subscribe, and leave a comment if you must. If you find something I did wrong, you can leave that in the comments as well. But I do believe that it is done correctly.